welcome you today. Yes, welcome, welcome. I just oh, wow. feel like something <laughs> good is about to happen. Oh, well, we know something good's about to happen because we have Kenyon Bridges with us. And That's we right. love having him on this program. And he's and written please a stay new tuned. book. Yes, you're going to enjoy this. It's called Everybody You Know. Favor. And this isn't just a book. This is revelation Amen. that is coming to us. And he's going to share that with us today. Yes. And our music, Mr. Ken Hope is with us. So good to have Kenny back. Yes. Amen. I hope he doesn't mind me calling him Kenny because I've known him for so long. But Ken Hope, I will lift up my eyes. Ken? God be near, calm my fear, and take my doubt. Your kindness is what pulls me up. Your love is all that draws me I will lift my eyes to the maker of the mountains I can't I will lift my eyes to the calm of the oceans raging wild. I will lift my eyes to the healer of the hurt I hold inside. I will lift my eyes, I lift my eyes. God, my God, let mercy sing her melody over me. God, right here, all I breathe is all of me. Your kindness is what pulls me up. Your love is all the draws. The calmer of the oceans raging wild, I will lift my eyes to the healer of the hurt I hold inside. I will lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. Cause you are and you were and you I will lift my eyes to the calm of the oceans raging wild. I will lift my eyes to the healer of the herd.
God, my God, I cry out, your beloved needs you now. Ah, Thank you, Kim. Appreciate that good music. And now you're about to hear something. Now, I know sometimes we hear things, but we don't get it. Now, you've got to get it now. And right. then get the book because it's just more because we don't have time to tell you everything that's in this man's heart. Yeah, I wish we did. It's a privilege to have him back. Keenan. Yes, God, God bless you. God Thank bless you all. So Amen. Thank you. God, God bless. bless you. God bless also. Now, you're a pastor. Yes, sir. And you've never wanted to go out and evangelize, or do you share this with other congregations? Oh, I do. I do. In fact, I just got back from Atlanta. Uh, I just spoke at a church about 4,000 people. And, uh, and we, we do a lot of evangelism. We go out to the community and minister and, and uh, really share the message of hope, which is connected to the message of favor. Wow. So, wow. amen. Well, you, we've got a good singer today for you, Ken. Oh, yeah. Hope. I may have to get his number after. <laughs> after. <laughs> Ken uh, Hope. Amen. Well, we want you to begin. With Genesis. <laughs> yeah, with, that's a good place to begin. Well, it all starts, doesn't it, with Abraham? That's it, what you said in the very beginning of your book. It does. You know, the, the whole premise of this message comes out of Galatians chapter 3. And Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says that the blessing of Abraham has come upon us through Jesus Christ. And so what we have to start doing is if, if the blessing of Abraham has come on us, it's two things that we need to do as believers. First of all, we need to find out who Abraham was, uh -huh. right? And then right. we need to discover what the blessing of Abraham is. And so when you go there to Genesis, we discover this guy, Abram, which uh, he comes out of the land of the Chaldeans, a pagan nation. God visits him and he tells him to come from your family members, your mother, your father, come out of that house and come to the land that I'm gonna show you. And in Genesis, God takes him through this process of really proving him, testing him in terms of his faith and things like that. And finally, God tells him that I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Yeah. Uh, and whoever blesses you shall be blessed. And I'm going to make your name great. And I'm going to make you a vessel of blessing. And through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So now we fast forward to Galatians 3 and we see that when God was making those promises to Abraham, he had us in mind. We are the seed of Abraham through Amen. Jesus, um, both the spiritual and natural seed. And so really what this blessing is, this that was upon Abraham's life, was not only the promise of the spirit, it was not only justification by faith, but it was also a life of supernatural favor. And Abraham lived in that favor for all the 175 plus years of his life, and you and I have access to the same thing in Jesus Christ, if we'll simply understand it, if we'll open our heart to this message, the same favor that was on Abraham is on us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's really the power of it. And you know, the real message I get from all this is that if you do what I say, uh oh. <laughs> live what I say you will receive what I say and you will be in the message of Abraham you know I, I always wanted to write a book that <laughs> it's God's book of blessing when mm. you do what he says you don't have to quote everything he says mm -hmm. you just do what he says amen. that's good and you will that's be good. blessed amen yeah. amen 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 and i think you're living <laughs> in that now you didn't know that when you were young 
Yeah, would you give us some of your background? Yeah. Just share with, with our audience <laughs> what you shared in the green room. That was so good. Well, you know, I'm the youngest of five children. And I got saved in the late 90s under John Osteen's ministry. Uh -huh. And my life was radically changed and transformed. I was, I had a lot of behavioral problems in school before I was a believer. And they didn't think that I would be able to graduate. And I didn't know then that I was experiencing the favor of God because God radically changed all of that. Not only did I graduate from high school, but I went to college on scholarship, which was impossible. I mean, literally, my, by my senior year, I was at a one point something GPA, and it was supernaturally turned around. So fast forward to my um, older, well, not, I'm still young at this time and just gotten married. We uh, are married to a beautiful wife. We have three children now. At the time, no children, newlyweds, uh, excited to be married went on our honeymoon, came back from the honeymoon, and we got some devastating news. Uh, I had lost my job. Mm. Not only did I lose my job, but uh, all the things that I had planned began to fall through the cracks. The house that we had just moved into, we, we lost that. Uh, the car that we just bought, we lost that. Now, before, I used to be embarrassed to tell this story. But I've realized that there's so many people in this kind of situation. Right. There's so many people that are being challenged and so many people that are struggling. And so I was in that place and I, and I began to cry out to God. I said, God, you know, what's going on? Why are you doing this to me? And that's the victim mentality. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and I had that mentality. But as I began to cry out to God, God began to reveal himself to me. And I can remember walking outside of our complex. We're in a little two-bedroom apartment with no doors on it. Uh, it wasn't in the best neighborhood. And uh, it was a real interesting <laughs> situation. And um, I began to cry out to God. And I was walking around that complex. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And he said, son, I know the plans I have for you. Out of Jeremiah 29, 11. Plans of good and not of evil. Plans to prosper you to give you a hope in the future. And that was the starting point. And God seeded that revelation in my spirit. And what began to happen was, as I shared with you all earlier, I was walking and the Lord literally, as if he opened the heavens, and I saw this large ring surround, it was like above my head, like a halo. And I'd never seen anything like that up to that point and haven't seen anything like that since. And I, and, I, and I said, God, what is this? And, and God begins to speak to me, and he says, that is my crown of favor. Wow. And he spoke to me out of Psalms 512. He says, I wow. shall compass the righteous with favor as with a shield. Now, in the Hebrew, it's literally the word crown. We are surrounded wow. with a crown of favor. And God showed me that you are already favored by me, but you have not tapped into this favor. You have not understood the dynamics of this favor, and therefore you've not been able to walk in it. Mm -hmm. But the moment he spoke to me, something clicked in my spirit, and he began to deal with me about the blessing of Abraham. And all of a sudden I said, okay, if I'm the blessing of Abraham, if my wife and I are blessed in Abraham, then the things that happen in Abraham's life should be happening in my life, mm -hmm. should be happening in my, in my wife's life. And so we started to place a demand on those promises. The first thing God told us to do was to start being a blessing to other people. Now, I thought God really meant that for my neighbor and not me. Right. I thought he was talking to the wrong person. And I said, maybe the signals got jammed in heaven and you meant that for the guy down the street. To bless you. Yeah. And, and so God began to say, I want you to be a blessing. And so we began to be a blessing right where we are, were. And uh, one day we went to church. There was a, a lady there, single mother really struggling and I had about $35 to my name and that was going to get us uh, gas and food to get home. I mean, it was really bad at this time. And the Lord says, I want you to give all that you have. And I said, God, God, <laughs> there you go again with those signal jamming things now. <laughs> and, uh, and God says, no, I've spoken. I want you to sow into her life. Now we had already given our offering and tithes and all that stuff. And we sowed into her, her life. And 
that day was a turnaround day in our lives. Mm. And that one act of obedience, which is another key we'll talk about in a moment, was a trigger that literally triggered the favor of God to work unhindered in our lives. And so what began to happen now, everywhere we went, people start blessing us. My landlord, where we just moved into, he says, the Lord told me to give you $200. So said, he was a Christian. He was a believer. And uh, this person says, the Lord told me to give you this, told me to give you that. When my wife would go to the grocery store, our money would supernaturally multiply. She would go with $20 and come back with $150 worth of groceries. No WIC, no food stamps, no anything. And we begin to see then that this is not luck, this is not hit or miss, Amen. but this is a covenant promise. And when you step into it through faith and obedience, it releases a deluge of the supernatural favor of God in your mm-hmm. life. I want to know how you got home. And how did you buy food? Okay, well, first of all, as soon as we gave the lady the money, right when we left church, someone told us that the Lord told them to give us some money. Wow. Then we got home later on. Someone came and brought money again. Then again, then again, then again. And it kept going on and on and on. Now, remember, at this time, I'm unemployed. My wife's unemployed. We weren't getting any income. We are not getting any state assistance or anything like that. And... All of a sudden, my wife, she was a student, and she says, let me see if I can maybe get an internship or something. And so she goes to her school, and when she gets there, one of the ladies says, I've been waiting for you. She says, you've been waiting for me? She says, yeah. We just got a grant or contract from the government that we want to subcontract to you all to do a program for our students. And that day, we won a $5,000 contract. Wow. My And it continued to go. This was every single day. And I'm telling you, this is not luck. This is not rabbit's foot. You know, this is not rubbing two sticks together. This is the power of God. This is the favor of God. And, And every believer has access to this kind of favor on a daily basis. And the key is a believer. Amen. You have got to be a believer and you're right it will happen to you and amen. Obedient. amen and the Lord is El Shaddai I want you to talk just a minute about <laughs> that and share the miracle your mother got in the hospital well when your, her pastor walked in okay so what happened was I'm a young believer at the time my mother was battling with some serious illness and we basically were in the ICU she had a blood clot on her lung and well, it started in her lower body and it was traveling to her lungs. So at this time, she's in a coma. She can't remember anybody's name. She's coming in and out of consciousness. And uh, it, it ended up in a full blown kind of coma state. We're in the hospital. I love my mother. I always loved my mother. She's always been dear to me. Yeah, and she gave you the accurate legend. She that sure favor. did. <laughs> Amen. Now, now, you, now you're tapping into something there now. <laughs> Had to say that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good. Wow. And I'll touch on that in a moment. Okay. But, but you know what was amazing? I'm in that hospital, and I'm sitting there with my, my mother and the rest of our siblings, and I was trying to figure out, Lord, what is going on right now? I don't want to lose my mother. She's a believer. I know your word promises healing. I don't know all the scriptures like you said. I can't quote them all, but I know it's in there somewhere. And I just begin to cry out to God. And they called my pastor. And it was about 12, 1 a.m. in the morning at this time. He gets there to the trauma center, goes in the ICU with her. And the minute he steps in the room, my mother comes out of the coma and she says, El Shaddai. Those are her first words. Wow. No, I didn't wow. speak Hebrew at the time, Brother Bob. Sister Jane. <laughs> so I, I knew it must have meant something powerful. I didn't know what it meant. But later on, I came to discover that that word El Shaddai means the all-sufficient one or the all-powerful God. It it literally means in Hebrew, the many-breasted one. And that means that God is able to supply whatever we need when we need it. So when we think favor, it's not just talking about money, but favor is also healing. Favor is also revelation. Favor is also wisdom. We look at Joseph. God gave him favor 
in Genesis and gave him the wisdom to be able to manage what God put under his care. So favor includes all of that. So the first it thing God showed could include someone coming to your house and painting it. Amen. That's favor. <laughs> That's right. That's favor. That's right. And so it's so many dimensions of favor. Amen. Mm. Wow. Amen. Well, uh, we're going to take a break. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to get deeper into this. And yeah. you're going to learn what God has in store for you. We'll be right back, and I think Kenny's going to be singing. Well, we want you to turn up the volume and listen to what God is saying to you. For more information on Keenan Bridges and to order his book, Supernatural Favor, please log on to his website at www.keenanbridges.com. You can also contact him by sending an email to info at keenanbridges.com. Keenan Bridges can also be found on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm sure you've heard the saying, you are what you eat and many can vouch that this is a very true statement. Proverbs 27, 19 talks about a similar comparison which goes, as water reflects a face, so a man's heart reflects the man. And just like what you put inside your physical body reflects the body, what you put inside your spiritual body reflects the heart. Putting the Word of God daily inside of you and having that personal relationship with Him is key. The Bible talks about that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What are you speaking today? as strong as I once thought I was. I'm just a shepherd boy singing to a choir of burning love. I'm just
Thank you, Kenny. Wow. I hope you got the words to that. Amen. We're going to be talking about favor, and I know you, you probably called out to the Lord and say, I need favor, I need favor. But favor isn't just something that God pours out on you. There's a two-way communication. And I believe right. mm -hmm. Brother Keenan is going to show us that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, favor, I, I tell people all the time, it's a covenant. Uh, God is a covenant God. Yes. Everything he does in his word, everything he does in our lives is based on covenant. It's not just about uh, you being in the right place at the right time, you trying to position yourself correctly. Those are aspects of favor. But favor, let's just define it for a moment if you don't mind. In the, in the Hebrew, the word favor as expressed in the Old Testament is the word chin. And chin means delight. It means charm. It means uh, goodness. When we, when we think of favor or charm, it's almost like uh, there's that one person in a family or a community that has that extra little charm on them. There's something about them. There's, mm -hmm. You look at them differently. They have, they have a finesse about them that causes people to really gravitate toward them. Now, imagine this. That's in the natural. Imagine when heaven is smiling on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Imagine when God is looking down and, and he is charmed by us. He is looking at us with delight in his heart. And when God delights in us, we have an audience with him. Amen. He hears us when we pray. He gives us access to things that others don't get access to. In fact, I'm reminded in Genesis when God was speaking of his, his servant Abraham which we're talking about the blessing of Abraham. Abraham's nephew, Lot, was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah had reached to heaven and God was so displeased that the stench of it was in his nostrils, the Bible records. But what happens is God is planning to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But before he does anything, he consults with Abraham. And he says, can I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Because he's my friend. Can you imagine being God's friend? Mm. The creator of the universe is thinking about you in his affairs, yeah, in his wow. endeavors. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. Mm. And, and God says, I need to talk with Abraham first just to get his feedback on what I'm about to do. The creator of the universe. And Abraham has this audience with God. He has this exchange with God that the other men on the earth don't have. We see it in the life of Noah. The Bible says Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And when God's about to destroy the entire earth with a flood, he chooses Noah's family to be the progenerators of the human race. That's favor. And so favor is heaven smiling on you. It's, it's the goodness of God. It is the love of God expressed in the various areas of our life. And that's what favor is all about. Amen. It's to pick you out of a crowd. It's to separate you from the rest. It's to look at you as different than everyone else. It's like when you go to the airport and you have that priority pass. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And you, there can be 130 people in the line, but you jump the line. Yes. Well, favor is a priority pass from heaven, and it gives us access to the things of God. Mm. Now, you said favor is released through our words. Uh -oh. How important are our words? You know, our words are important. Our words are very important because, first of all, God is a speaking spirit. The Bible says that, uh, that God is a spirit. Jesus said in John 4, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the realm of the spirit is governed through the words we speak. You know, in the last 10, 15 years, the church has kind of gone away from this whole confession thing and the words we speak. We think that's old school, you know. <laughs> That's Kenneth Hagin, and that's back then. Yeah. But no, it's a biblical truth, and it doesn't yeah. change. And what I've found is that our words have a profound effect on our ability to walk in God's favor. Amen. Now, all of us are believers, for example. We all 
have access to God's favor by virtue of Jesus. But everyone doesn't speak according to the word. And as a result, they don't necessarily experience all the blessings that, let's say, the person next to them may experience. It all depends on what we say. Yeah. Our words literally release God's favor. Every day I wake up, uh, I pray and I begin to declare. And I say, God, I thank you that according to Psalm 512, your favor surrounds me like okay. a shield. I thank you, Lord, that the righteous shall decree a thing and it shall be established. And I decree the favor of God today. Everywhere I go, men will favor me, men will bless me, and I will be a blessing to men. It's both yes. ways. Yes. And, um, and every day, something excellent happens. And uh, I, it's, it's, you can't get around it. Now, why do, talk about making a demand. Oh, boy. <clears throat> well, the kingdom of God is much like the natural kingdoms of the earth, a natural economy. God has an economy. A lot of people are ignorant of this truth, but there is something called the economy of God. And in the economy of God, there is something called supply and demand. In other words, the more we place a demand upon God's promises for our lives, the more we will see a supply of those promises. If you don't place a demand, there can be no supply. People may even listening saying, are you saying that you have to place a demand on God? How dare you? Well, let Blasphemy. me just say this. Isaiah 45, <laughs> command ye me. Command ye me. We can go to Malachi 3. Prove me, says the Lord. Yeah. If I will not open unto you the window of heaven and pour out a blessing, then I should be room enough to receive. Jesus said in Luke 6 that the power of the Lord was present to heal. It says in another place that he would go to certain communities and couldn't do any mighty miracles there because the people had no expectation. So yeah. our, our, our dem we demand by faith, by putting our faith and trust in God's word, Amen. we are drawing from the reservoir of heaven. I, I tell people often, when I was growing up, my grandmother had a hand well. And I don't know if y'all remember that, but there were cast iron hand wells that would be above the ground. I remember. Okay, amen, <laughs> amen. I thought I was alone. <laughs> but you would have to pump the hand wells and pump them and pump them. And you, you have to prime them. You have to prime them yeah. first. You have to pour water into it and then pump it. That's now it. what happened, there was a reservoir underneath the, 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 the ground that you couldn't see. But the more you pumped, the more you primed, the more you pump, the more you prime the more that water was released. It's the same way our words place a demand upon heaven. In fact, I, I share in a book about uh, that our words are literally the air traffic control of heaven. Yes, I wrote that down. Just like a flight yeah. landing strip, you know, sometimes the pilot doesn't have visibility, but he has to rely upon the control tower to tell him when and where to land. And so, our words, the Bible says, the angel of the Lord hearken to his voice. Where's the voice of the Lord? God's word coming out of our mouth is the same to the angels as God speaking to them directly. Yes. And so when we speak and we begin to proclaim God's favor, the angels are released and begin to go and retrieve things, begin to move things on our behalf, begin to arrange situations in our favor. And it's all based on what we say out of our mouths. Now you said, <laughs> <laughs> when you were sort of complaining to the Lord, <laughs> when you didn't get what you needed, this is so funny. Well, this tell is him a, what. This, this is a true story. The oh, Lord yeah, spoke to it. me. I was just complaining. <laughs> and I, I said, I would pray, God, do this. And, and nothing would happen. And God, you didn't do this. And nothing would happen. And one day, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me so crisp and clear. And isn't it good when the Lord speaks to you? <laughs> kind oh, of yes. rebukes yes. you a little bit. <laughs> In love. in love and, and, and grace. And the Lord just lovingly said to me, well, son, every time I send my angels a provision to come and provide what you're praying for, they think they have the wrong address. <laughs> and I said, God, what do you mean? He says, yeah, they hearken to my word and, and, and your confession is contradicting itself. And so they end up coming back, not delivering the package you prayed for. And it's not their fault, it's what you're speaking that's really yeah. hindering them <laughs> from working on your behalf. Wow. Yes. Now, that's it, good. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's well, we want to hold this book up again. Supernatural Favor, Kenyon Bridges. 
a wonderful book. Praise it is God. just, it builds your faith up. Amen. That's Praise what you God. know your other book did on healing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this really builds your faith up. Amen. Amen. In fact, I told my daughter, I'm sending this to you because her husband's going to be looking for a job soon when he um, gets out of this special education he's in. And um, I said, you need to declare and decree, and we do too. You know, sometimes Amen. we forget to do this, but God's words are powerful, and he says they won't return void. Amen. He's watching over his word to perform it. That's right. He also says his words are active, they're alive, they're sharper than a two-edged sword, they're able to pierce asunder, That's right. even to the division of the joints and the marrow, the spirit and the soul, a discerner of thoughts. Wow! The word Amen. of God is alive. Amen. Alive. We Amen. have to remember that. We have to get that. Amen. God's word is alive and will not return to him void. Amen. And the enemy wants us to go by the circumstances, doesn't That's right. You haven't gotten it yet. When do you think you're going to get it? So-and-so got it. And then you get into jealousy. <laughs> You've and really got to guard your heart, mm -hmm. don't you? Oh, that is complaining. Yes. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> and we say, wow. well, they have it, but we don't have it. That's <laughs> complaining. That's right. Yeah. And you're not looking. If, if I look at what others have, what I'm doing is I'm not looking to heaven. David said, I will lift my eyes to the hills mm -hmm. from whence come my help. My help does not come horizontally, it comes vertically. That's right. When I complain, I take my eyes off of heaven and I place it on the natural. In fact, I talk about um, the Bible says when the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt, they went to a plain area that was near the Red Sea and they were enclosed. And now the Pharaoh's army, the Egyptians are coming. And the first thing they did after seeing all these 10 plagues, after seeing all the miracles, they complained. They said, yeah. you brought us out here to die. And Moses says something so powerful. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now, uh, in my word study, the word see is the Greek word skopeo. It's transliterated in Greek skopeo. And it's where we get the word telescope. Our faith is the telescope of the supernatural. In other words, if I look up at the sky now, I can't see all the, the planets and the solar systems because my visibility is limited. But with a telescope, with like the Hubble telescope, I can see all types of stars and gases and all sorts of celestial bodies. Well, the same thing is true in the realm of the spirit. When we, when we, when we look at with our natural eyes, sometimes it's discouraging, but when we put on the telescope of faith, we can see the invisible realm. And it's in the realm of the invisible where our provision is. Amen. Favor is not a physical thing, it's a supernatural thing. It's not a, a visible thing, it's an invisible thing working behind the scenes. And we have to see it with the eyes of faith. And we release that favor through what we say. So when I don't care where you are today in your life, you may be going through a struggle, a difficulty, a challenge, but you need to know that God has already favored you. If you have a relationship with God through Jesus, the favor of God is on your life. It's your birthright. And you need to start changing what you're saying and what you're believing because changing your believing will change your living and it'll produce victory in your life. Amen. About a minute Amen. and a half, the law of cheerfulness. What's that got to do with it? <coughs> well, you know, the Bible talks about in um, 2 Corinthians, which is one of my favorite scriptures. It's actually one of the key verses we use in the book. The law of cheerfulness means God loves a cheerful giver. And the word cheerful it literally means to give hilariously in the Greek. It means to give joyfully, which means God doesn't just look at what we give, but he looks at how we how give we it. Give it. Yes. He looks at the condition yes. of our heart right. while we're giving it. And cheerfulness releases the full ramifications of the blessing of God in your life. Let me say this real quick, if I may. When we start teaching this principle in our church, 100% of our church began tithing, including wow. the three-year-olds in our ministry. There's not That's a amazing. single person in our church that does not tithe. I don't ask for multiple offerings. I don't beat them down with guilt, but they have a revelation of cheerful giving that has transformed their lives. People are coming out of debt. Businesses are being born. People's businesses are tripling and quadrupling in profit. And the giving in our church has literally tripled wow. since we began to proclaim this message. Mm. So if he Praise did it God. for us, 
He can do it for anybody. And you don't have to take up three offerings? No, we don't take up <laughs> any. In fact, I may spend uh, two minutes, a minute on the offering, max. We don't have a long sermon about it. The people have revelation. And if you're a pastor there, you need to understand this. Instead of trying to modify the behavior in your church, teach the people who God says they are. Teach them the favor God's already given to them, and they will respond accordingly. This is a powerful principle. Amen. And when we learn it, our lives will be transformed. Amen. Wow. We're going to take a break, but we'll be back right after this. Of all the stories we could tell here at the Sea of Galilee, my very favorite one is of the day Jesus returned here, after the crucifixion, after the resurrection. The last chapter of John, it tells us that many of the disciples were fishing again. They felt disqualified to follow Jesus. They had failed so miserably in Jerusalem. And yet as they fished, there was, there was an image of a man on the beach preparing breakfast and they realized it was Jesus. And he not only invited them to a meal that morning, he invited them to a second chance. And with that invitation to grace, they never failed Jesus again. And that invitation to grace still stands today. In Israel, I'm Andy Cook for the Christian Television Network.
Thank you. And Cain has been giving us such revelation, really, that I want you to get it. But some of you are not in the position to get it. And that hurts my heart. Mm -hmm. S seriously. And I, I want to ask him to bring you to a place of being in the position to receive what he says. That's right. Most, not I most, know I know a lot of you don't know the Lord. You know about him and you listen to him, but you don't really know him. And so I'm going to ask him to lead you in a prayer that you will know him if you pray this prayer with our brother Bridges. I know he knows exactly what you're going through. Though he doesn't see you, he knows what you're going through. And would you lead our people in prayer that are watching. To. There's some watching for the first time. But if you will listen to what he says, you'll be in the position to be living under the favor of God. Amen. You, you know, I, I want to tell the audience that the key to favor is intimacy with God. In fact, in the Bible, when the Israelites were in the land of Goshen, they were protected. They were under a canopy of God's divine protection. The plagues that hit Egypt did not hit them. And it was because they were intimate with God. In fact, the land, the word Goshen in Hebrew means to draw near. They were near to God. They were near to his heart. And as a result, God covered them. And I want to pray for you today. You may be in a situation where you're, you're going through struggles. You may be dealing with sickness in your body. You may not have a relationship with God. You may be going through challenges in your life. And I want to tell you something. God loves you. He has an awesome plan for your life. And he sent his son Jesus to die. The greatest act of favor is not a new car, a new house, gold or jewelry. But the greatest act of favor is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to challenge you today to receive him into your heart. Father, we thank you now. Thank you. That each person under the sound of my voice, that Lord, you will touch them. Holy Spirit, move on their heart, that they will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And just pray this simple prayer. Say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and he was raised from the dead. And I repent of all sin and I come to you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me now, cleanse me with your blood. I ask you into my heart, fill me with your spirit that I might live for you. I give you control of my life today. In Jesus' name.
God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Kenny. If you pray that prayer and you meant it, God will start giving you favor. And if you've listened to what he has said, there is a progression in this. He doesn't just pour you out a million dollars. There's a progression to receiving from God. Yeah. And we want you to live in that. Amen. We, we honestly not only believe it, but God has done that in our lives. And I want you to know that we need this reminder time and again. Amen. Amen. You know, you were going to share, uh, we just have a couple of minutes, but just share a testimony to build people's faith up. Well, you know, one of the things that's so amazing is that the favor of God is supernatural, yes. which means it is above the natural. Isn't that yes. awesome? Yes. God knows how to put his super on our natural. Yes. And uh, so many people go through difficult natural circumstances. There was a lady in our church, well, a couple, but there was a lady and, and her daughter. The lady had not had custody of her children in three years, was going through a nasty divorce. Two sons that she didn't have any relationship with. And uh, we got a hold of this favor declaration stuff. <laughs> and we began to make declarations over her. And uh, I said that someone's going to get the custody of their children back. And the ama um, an amazing thing happened. Two weeks later, her ex-husband calls her. And he says, you know what? I've been going through some challenges. I'm going to move to your area. And I'm going to give you custody of your children without mm -hmm. the courts. Uh, another young lady was there who had a serious um, sentence over her head and she was going to do some serious prison time. But we prayed and we said, God, we declare that the favor of God surrounds her like a shield. When she steps in the courtroom, that she'll get favor. The Amen. judge looks at her, dismisses her case. Christ. And that's what the favor of God can do. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise, Amen. God. Wow. Praise God. Ah. <laughs> you are so fortunate to even hear a message like this. And now... Amen. Kenny is going to sing us out a white flag. I've oh. never heard this song. <laughs> storm and tempest roll we cannot win this fight inside our rebel hearts we're laying down our weapons now we raise our white flag we surrender This freedom song is marching on. We raise our white flag. We surrender.
the cross lifted high, lifted high. We lift 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 the cross lifted high, lifted high. We raise our white flag. We surrender. 